Sunday is that special time for us to get together and study the Word of God. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our presentation of Give Me the Bible. So go get your Bible, sit down, and let's study together from the pages of God's eternal Word right here on Give Me the Bible. Good morning, my friend. We thank you for tuning us in today for Give Me the Bible. You know, you and I will be witnessing, no doubt, uh, the spring storms before long. They're on their way. And, uh, you know, we like the rain, but we don't like the storm. And, you know, every year we're faced with that, aren't we? But you know what? Every day we're faced with spiritual storms. We want to talk to you this morning about the storms that threaten us every day in a spiritual way. And there are many, many of them. And uh, we do want to tell you how thankful and grateful we are that you've tuned in this morning. And and we hope that you'll get your Bible and sit down and study with us from the pages of this great holy book of God. We're going to call on Joe Hancock right now to tell us a little bit about these storms, Joe. Dan, thank you, and thank you all for being with us this morning. We greatly do appreciate it. Uh, I'm just going to start from from Jump Street where you were, Dan. There's a lot of storms that that come to us from nature. You know, hurricanes, tornadoes, ice storms, snow storms, wind storms, rain storms. Those things we have no control over whatsoever. And that's just part of the the world we live in. It's, It's just God's design that spring and summer and fall and winter, those seasons change. And with those seasonal changes comes disruption in the, in the atmosphere and, and storms. There's another storm we've been fighting now for some two years or so. It's that COVID storm. We've, we've been in the midst of a storm of information, a storm of not so good information and not so bad information. And some say the information is true, some say it's false, but it's just been a storm of information from all sides. It makes you wonder what to do with it. We've been in a storm of, of illness and sickness and death. It's almost uh, like a, a plague of the Old Testament times. But I want to take you to the Bible, to a passage in Matthew chapter 14. Maybe this can help us deal with these storms because they're storms we don't have any control over. On this occasion, Jesus had fed the 5,000, and he has put his disciples in a boat and had them go to the other side of the sea. He had sent the, the, the thousands of people away and had gone up to pray and and in the middle of the evening, uh, in the nighttime, the, the disciples were out on the sea in a boat, and the storm came up, and the waves were tossing them about, and the wind was strong, and they were sore afraid, the scriptures say. About that time, Jesus comes to them walking on the water, and you know the story that, that they first thought it was a ghost or a spirit, and then uh, Peter finally says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you. And the Lord said, okay, come. Peter got out to the boat and walked on the water. Until he took his eye off Jesus, when his focus began to be on the storm and not on the Christ, and he began to say, Lord, save me. Jesus reached out, took him, put him in the boat. They got in the boat, and the storm quit. When you and I are battling storms of life, and I don't care what storms they are, whether it be tornadoes, wind storms, COVID storms, we have to understand we are not going to leave this planet until the Lord deems it proper in the right time, no matter what. So trust in God, keep your eye on Jesus, not like Peter didn't, but keep your eye on the faith of Jesus and he will take care of you until it's your time to go. Dan. Well, Joe, you uh, have spoken true words this morning and we appreciate it so much. And uh, what a blessing it is to know that we have one who rescues us from those horrible storms of life. And as Joe mentioned, many of them are just natural, they happen. Uh, We have no control over it. But many of the storms that we face perhaps are facilitated by our own selves, uh, our own foolishness. And uh, we're going to call on Barry Haynes to tell us how that's done. Barry? He decided to make his fortune by being a a pirate. And so he went and joined a crew, and he was looking around at the crew, and he saw this guy that was every bit the model of a pirate. He had the hook hand, the, the eye patch, the peg leg, and so he went to figure out what made this guy so, so such a pirate. And so he asked him, he said, how'd you lose your leg? And he said, oh, in the midst of battle one day, the enemy was firing a cannonball, and it came through, and it took off my leg. And he said, 
said, oh, that's terrible. He said, but well, how did you lose your hand? And he said, well, we were, we were battling uh, some sharks. And he said, I was trying to knock it away and it reached up and it bit up and it took off my hand. And he said, oh, that, that's terrible. And finally he said, but, well, how did you lose your eye? Why do you have the eye patch? He said, well, one day I was out and I looked up and there was a seagull that landed in the crow's nest. And I looked up at it and that seagull, well, it dropped what seagulls sometimes drop and it came right into my eye. And he said, that made you lose your eye? He said, no, it was the first day with a hook. You know, sometimes it's what happens to us and it's sometimes it's what we do to ourselves. You know, some of the things that we have happen are because we, we do it to ourselves. As, as one uh, radio host talks about in financial sense, we, we pay the stupid tax. We make that mistake, and it, it causes us later to realize we, we got into this because of our own fault. Like Jonah. Jonah's disobedience to God caused him to get in the storm that came about him and only came because he refused to listen to God. You know, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4, in verses 14 and 16, he says, If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and God rest upon you. Make sure that none of you suffers as an evildoer or a thief or a murderer or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but to glorify God in that name. You see, sometimes when we suffer, we, we may think it's always because I'm a Christian, because I'm faithful, but in fact, it's because of our own bad actions because we aren't uh, doing the things that we're supposed to. You know, in Hollywood, when a producer makes a movie or, or a director has a movie and it, it goes astray and it's not his intended vision, they have to credit a name, but he doesn't want his name on it. He'll put a pseudonym on it. The most popular one is Alan Smithy. If you see that on a movie, it usually means the person who was in it doesn't want to be known by it. I wonder if Christ thinks the same thing of us, the people that claim to be Christians, but by their actions, it, it, he, doesn't, he doesn't want their name on it. You know, we need to be careful that when the problems of our life come about that we don't think of them, that there are other causes other than ourselves. And when we see ourselves creating our own storms, we avoid it. Well, thank you, Barry. Thank you very much. And uh, right now we want to go to Perry Cowan. And uh, Perry, I know that uh, some of the storms that we face are by nature and some of them are by our own undoing, perhaps, and perhaps our own foolishness and the things that we get ourselves into. But sometimes I think God allows us to experience some of the storms in life for the, for the real purpose of helping us to develop in our relationship with God. And uh, no one can really feel the anchor of God without having gone through the storm, don't you think? I do agree with that, Dan, because oftentimes God gives us problems to overcome in order to make us stronger. We pray for those things, to pray, pray for strength. We don't realize that the problems that we face is God's answer to our prayer. Sometimes we... we uh, just, just don't see what God is doing, but God has a big picture for what he has planned for us in this life. I, I believe there are a lot of examples of that in the scripture, uh, that God sends into the lives of his servants storms, as you will, uh, to help them to understand where their strength really lies, that it should be in the Lord. Uh, one such was Gideon. Gideon was a a servant of God. He had been given a task to, uh, to defeat the Midianites. And uh, the first introduction we have of him, he's, he's hiding in a, in a uh, wine press away from the Midianites. But God had chosen him to do this. And so, so Gideon asked God for a sign that, that uh, was going to show this really what you want me to do. Well, on more than one occasion, God provided signs. And in the face of a huge Midianite army, God had Gideon to pare down his men, his army, from 32,000 men down to 300. Now, you think that wasn't a storm in Gideon's life? How am I going to defeat this huge Midianite army with only 300 men? Uh, well, I, I think that God did that for Gideon to uh, perhaps show him that he put his faith in God put his trust in God, then uh, things would work out for him. Moses, Moses, uh, God spoke to him through the burning bush. And Moses didn't want this storm of going into Egypt. Uh, he was happy being a shepherd out in the hills for his father-in-law. 
he, he had a peaceful life and, and he wasn't looking forward to the storms that he was going to have to face. Yet, yet God brought that to him and then he brought him through the storm. We need to understand that uh, what God provides for us, we don't always see as good. Uh, but if we can see the big picture that God has in mind for us, we will be stronger and a better servant of his as we weather the storm. Dan? Well, Perry, I, I really believe that God leads us through storms. Notice that. I said through storms. Uh, we're not there to stay. Uh, we walk through that valley of the shadow of death. We don't go there to stay. <laughs> But you know, sometimes in life, people, other people will lead us into a storm. And that's because we listen to the wrong folks. And we find ourselves engulfed in the threatening winds of life and the horrible tornadoes of problem after problem because we listen to the wrong people and they drag us into that storm. And Brother Chris Grota, would you share with us some thoughts along that line? I'd be glad to do that, Brother Dan. Thank you all for watching this morning. And I just, uh, I want to be like Jesus, who was asleep in the stern of a boat during a storm. Uh, he, he went on that boat even as he was. He didn't take anything with him. He had, of course, he had the power to calm the storms and he rebuked the wind and the sea and all that. Um, and so I'm not worried about the storms so much now days as I might have been in years past because I've learned that Jesus is in control. Uh, but while I want to say that, I want to tell you the storms that I want to talk about are the storms that are uh, not things that you do, but it's sort of the vortex you get caught up in. And, you know, there's people that bring storms into your life and you have to kind of help them navigate and deal with them. Uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, sinned in the garden. They lost right to the tree of life in Genesis 3.24 and of course death was was passed to all men, Romans 5 and verse number 2. That is a storm that they had that has affected us. And then uh, Achan in Joshua chapter 7 verse 1 stole some uh, things that belonged in the treasury of the Lord there that came out of um, Jer uh, Jericho uh, and then when they went to battle against AI, they, they had to retreat. And in the retreat, there were 36 men that died. Why? Why did they die? Well, those families were affected by the death of their loved one because of something Achan had done. And of course, you know, um, there were many years in which uh, different times where uh, Israel went into captivity because of the sin of somebody else. There were faithful in amongst the unfaithful. Uriah died because of David's sin with Bathsheba. Uh, later on, David sinned in numbering the people in 2 Samuel 24, and as a result, 70,000 men of Israel died because of his choice. Um, those are things that happen. Uh, there are people that bring problems into your life to try to get you to solve them. In Luke chapter 12 and verse number 13, there were two covetous brothers, or at least one of the brothers was covetous, and said, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus said, have you... Have, have you made me, a, am I a ruler and a judge over you that I should decide these matters? And he went on to teach a, a lesson, an important lesson on covetousness. I say all that to say this, whether you're children that are caught up in the thick of the fight of your mom and dad or, or whatever the problem is in your family, in your home, in your workplace, a lot of the problems that we face in this life is because of the sin that other people are doing. And we need to be able to navigate, see what that is, and navigate that with Jesus Christ's help. Back to you, Dan. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, we're grateful for your time and your effort this morning in sharing with us those, those wonderful thoughts. Now, I want to go further this morning in the program, and uh, we're going to call on Brother Jerry Munholland. And, and Jerry, one thing I've learned in life is many of the problems and the storms and the threatening lightning just comes up out of the blue. It was kind of like the pandemic that we're still faced with here in this life, isn't it? That coronavirus, uh, it just came out of the blue, did it, in Wuhan. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Someone just described people as saying there, there are two types of people. E either you are, well, there are three types of people. Either you are in the midst of a storm or you are just coming out of a storm or you're going to face a storm. 
And that's certainly true in life. If you've lived long enough, you know that you face these storms of life. And sometimes it is that we know that they're coming. Sometimes it is that we don't know they're coming. It just happens upon us. All of a sudden, we wake up one day and we are just feeling overwhelmed with the storm of life. And I can't help but go to the book of Job whenever I think about this and being overwhelmed of storms that come our way. When you think about Job, Job chapter 1, beginning in verse 14, it is, And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the axes were feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them, and I, and they were all destroyed, and I, and I, I alone were able to escape. And in verse 16 it says, And while he was yet speaking, there came another servant, and said, The fire of God fell from heaven, and, and destroyed all the sheep. And, and, and all the servants out there, and I and I alone was able to escape. And it said, and while he was yet speaking, verse 17, the Chaldeans came and destroyed all the camels and all the servants there, and I and I alone was able to es escape. And while he was yet speaking, another servant came and said, your sons and your daughters were at your, their brother's house, and the winds blew, and the, the house fell upon them, and they all died, and I and I alone was able to escape. Can you imagine as Job was hearing the terrible news, just one of these would be enough, just losing of possessions and losing of servants. And while he was yet speaking, another came, another wave of that storm of life came. Overwhelmed? Sure he was. But what saw him through? This is faith in God. To know that catastrophe and storms could come our way, some of our own making, some not of our own making, but sometimes they come so suddenly and so often we feel overwhelmed. God is there. Job leaned upon God, and that's what so, saw him through. You know, we may not know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Let's lean upon God in all storms of life that come our way. Now back to you, Dan. Well, Jerry, thank you as well. You know, that just reminds all of us that that storm could pop up any time, any moment, and it could be a very severe storm. So what we have to do is make preparation for it. You know, when I was a young man, we had a, a storm cellar. I didn't really like to go down in that storm cellar, even though my dad had made provisions, because it was dark, it was gloomy, and I really wanted to take my chances above ground. But my dad saw that uh, what was best for us, and we went in the storm cellar. You know... Christ is our storm seller, isn't he? He is. Regardless of what kind of storm it may be. And it could be you may be going through a financial storm right now. We're going to ask Rocky Whitley right now to talk about that storm. Thank you, Dan. A couple passages that come to mind, though there are a great many in Scripture, and I encourage you to, to search these out. The first passage is out of 1 Timothy chapter 6. The Apostle Paul says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. You know, there is a perspective to life that we must all have when it comes to material things, when it comes to, uh, to money and, and to wealth. Paul continues on, Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. And then a passage that is often misquoted, but we'll quote it correctly, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. You see, uh, these financial storms that we get ourselves into, sometimes they are of our own making. And let's keep God always in the forefront of our perspective. Sometimes they're not of our making, whether we lose our job or, or some other kind of disaster comes upon us. But one passage that gives me great, great comfort is Matthew chapter 6. There Jesus tells us to not store for ourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for ourselves treasures in heaven where thieves don't break in and steal, moths and vermins don't destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. 
He continues on in verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you'll love the one or hate the other, or you will despise the one and to be devoted to the other. You can't serve both God and money. And then he goes on to say, don't worry about your life, uh, what you're going to eat or going to drink, about your body, what you're going to wear. Listen, God takes care of the birds of the heavens and the flowers that grow on the fields. Surely he's going to take care of you. And so he says in verse 33, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Every day has enough trouble of its own. Dan? Well, Rocky, you've helped me kind of lead into that uh, next speaker and uh, our last but not least. You know, uh, storms do not have to hurt us. We don't have to be injured if we're in the right place at the right time. And if we're prepared for such a storm, now, I want to call on uh, Buddy Ray. Buddy's recently moved over to uh, Murfreesboro, Arkansas. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Buddy, I think that's where they go and hunt for diamonds. And uh, maybe you've been there. But, you know, we ought to be hunting for the diamonds of God's Word. And in our closing segment today, we're going to ask Buddy to share with us another diamond about how we should react according to the Bible to these storms that we face, buddy. Thank you, Dan. And certainly as a human being, when I face these storms of life that our panelists have so ably spoken about, I want you to know that I am going to respond. I'm either going to respond in a negative way or I'm going to respond in a positive way. And as Dan said, as a child of God, if I will look into God's word and I will be a faithful servant, live an obedient life, and study to show myself approved, I'm going to find two valuable tools that can help me to face these storms of life and can help me pass through them and come safely on the other side. Number one, our brother James says to us in his writings in James chapter 1 that I'm to count it all joy when I face various trials. He said, because the testing of my faith produces patience. I want you to think this morning about your faith, a valuable tool that we have to battle the storms of life. We're told in Scripture that the just are to walk by faith. We're to walk by faith and not by sight. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says, Then he spoke a parable unto them, that men always ought to pray and to not lose heart. You see, when times are tough, when times are troublesome, that's when I kneel and bow to my God. I should always pray. I should not lose heart. I should allow my faith to grow through obedience to him and know that this testing of my faith is going to produce patience, that I'm going to be a better person as God guides me through these storms and brings me safely to the shore. Another valuable tool that I have that is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 is to trust. This scripture says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. So many times when I'm struggling, so many times when I'm knee-deep in trouble here in this world and these storms of life are surrounding me, I try to trust in man. Or maybe I think about my own understanding and I try to work my way through. But it's said here by the preacher in Proverbs to trust the Lord with all my heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. You see, the storms of life are certainly going to come. How are you going to respond? Hopefully and prayerfully, I respond in a positive way through my growing, obedient, working faith and my absolute trust in my God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dan? Well, buddy, thank you, and true words are never spoken. You know, uh, that old song that we sing, When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, do not be discouraged. It's not all lost. But we put our trust in God. We anchor to Him, as Buddy said. And we try to live not only for, but with our Master as well. But if you're not a Christian, you're not ready for the next storm. And it will come. That's why we hope that you would entertain the words of God to be baptized and to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. By the way, we're offering a, a free DVD has a menu on it, has five lessons on it, uh, simply entitled, 
What must I do to be saved? That's a good question. It probably is the most important question you could ever, ever entertain in your mind. This DVD will not take you to the doctrines of men, but it will take you right to the Word of God where you can find those scriptures that will tell you specifically what to do to be saved. And I hope today that you'll do that. Many of you have written us recently, maybe either by electronic mail, email, uh, or perhaps maybe by letters or calls telling us how much you enjoy this program. We'd like to hear from you right here on the Give Me the Bible. If you have a subject you'd like for us to entertain in our discussion here, uh, we'd be happy to do that. So uh, why not sit down at the computer and drop us a little email this week or give us a call. Uh, someone is standing by now to take your call at that 800 number that will appear momentarily. We'd like to hear from you. And we pray that God will richly bless you and your life. Whatever storm you may be facing today or maybe tomorrow, I'm Dan Manuel. And asking you to join us next week at the same time, right here, for Give Me the Bible. Sing the sweetest song of all.